I'm absolutely fed up with the web design world's obsession with WebGL, shaders, and those fancy but oh so boring JavaScript libraries like 3JS. I was browsing the vast realms of the internet when I stumbled upon the Studio 9P website. Instantly, my eyes widened with wonder, and I thought to myself that this is pure web design gold. But alas, as I dug deeper, I found myself facing a familiar predicament. You guessed it right. It looked like Studio 9P had crafted their masterpiece using 3JS or some other fancy JavaScript library. But this time, I was determined not to let this setback crush my creative spirit. And that's when it hit me. I made a decision. No more giving in to the complexities of those tools. Instead, I chose to employ the power of GSAC. Today I'm excited to share with you my journey of recreating a mind-blowing fake 3D interaction experience. Now, it's not an exact replica, but let me tell you, it looks darn good. And the best part is, I achieved it with just a few lines of JavaScript and the magic of GSAT. Let's dive right into this. We won't require much here, just two things, a cursor and a container for our images. For the cursor, we will insert an image tag, specifying the source of the image file. Let's move on to the container. We'll make another div with the class name gallery to hold all our images. To add the images, we'll use div elements with the class name block. You can add as many blocks as you want, but remember that you'll need to position them manually later, similar to what I'll show you in the next part of the video. First of all, we will remove the margins and padding of all elements and set the box sizing property to border box. We will also set the cursor to none which will allow us to use a custom cursor. For the cursor, we set the position to fixed, the top and left to zero. We also set the Z index to a high value, ensuring it has the highest stacking order. To prevent the cursor from interfering with click events, we set the pointer events to none. For the cursor image, we set the width and height to 60 pixels, determining the size of the cursor image. For the gallery, We'll set the position to absolute, with width of 100VW and height of 100VH so that it covers the entire width and height of the viewport. We will also set the background color to black. We'll include transform style preserve 3D and specify a perspective of 2000 pixels which allows child elements within the gallery to inherit and maintain their 3D transformation. To style each individual block in our gallery, we start by setting the position property to absolute. Next, we specify the width and height properties as 200 pixels and 100 pixels, respectively. We will set background color to lighter gray for backup. We apply a translate Z with a value of 1750 pixels. This moves each block along the Z axis, creating a sense of depth in the space. We will update this property later with GSAP to create that 3D animation. Now comes the challenging part. Adding the images might seem like a bit of a hassle, and I'll admit, I've taken a less efficient approach here. Instead of opting for a smarter and more streamlined method, I've manually set the positions of each block. You will ask why? Well, it's all about creating that captivating visual impact and achieving a fake but realistic 3D scene and by manually positioning each block, I've ensured that they align in a visually pleasing manner, complementing one another in the gallery. Let's animate this shit now. First, we select the cursor with the query selector and add an event listener to the entire document body for the mouse move event. This event triggers the onMouseMove function. Inside the onMouseMove function, we use the GSAP library to animate the cursor's position. The two function animates the cursor element over a duration of a microsecond, basically following the mouse pointer. We will use page X and page Y methods to tie the cursor with the actual mouse position. I subtracted 5 pixels from both based on the cursor size in such a way that it stays exactly in center of the actual mouse position. Next, we select all the blocks using document.querySelectorAll. We also define some values for animation timing like duration, stagger and repeat delay, providing a delay between each repeated animation, using GSAP. We apply an animation to all the blocks using GSAP with the duration of 5 seconds. The scale property is animated from zero, resulting in the block scaling up from nothing. The top and left properties are set to 50%, positioning the blocks at the center of the screen. The transform property applies a 3D transformation, translating the blocks along the Z-axis to create a 3D zoom in effect. The stagger option is used to specify the delay behavior between each block where we set each repeat and repeat delay so that the animation should repeat indefinitely in a seamless flow. Now, we initialize a variable called previous GIF and set it to null. This variable will be used to keep track of the previously added GIF element. To create that shoot effect on click, we use a for each loop to iterate over each block element and attach a click event listener using add event listener. Within the click event listener, we retrieve the mouse coordinates using event, client x and event. 
client Y and store them in the X and Y variables, respectively. We check if a previous GIF element exists. If so, we remove it using the remove method. Next, we create a new image element using document.createElement and assign the source of the GIF image file. We set various CSS styles for the GIF, including position, absolute, left and top positions based on the mouse coordinates for positioning, transform to scale the GIF by 2.5 times, and pointer events none to make it unclickable. Then, the GIF is appended to the document body using a pen child. After 500 milliseconds, we set the SRC of the GIF to an empty string to remove it from the display, assuming it played for once entirely. We also update the previous GIF to current GIF element. We temporarily hide the clicked block by setting its display property to none. After 5 seconds, we restore its display by setting block style display to block, so that it get added back in the animation loop again. And there you have it. This might not be the most conventional approach, but hey, sometimes you just have to go with what you know. Green Sock was my trusty companion for this adventure, as usual. I hope you had fun following along with this tutorial. If you enjoyed it and want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro member. With pro membership, you'll gain access to the source code for each new tutorial and receive monthly website templates to expand your website building toolkit. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.